I'm Sung Hun Han, and please come here, my co-worker. Yeah, yeah, you, you, right now. Yeah, this is Jung Ang Kang, my co-worker, and <laughs> yes, we are very excited to share our research results with you. And thank you for inviting us. Uh, in this presentation, we are going to talk about myths and truths about hypervisor-based kernel protector. And we introduce lightweight kernel, uh, hypervisor-based kernel protector shadow box. Okay. May I see? Uh, I'm a senior security researcher at NSR of South Korea. And I'm also an operating system and firmware developer and an author of a, a book series titled 64-bit multi-core operating system principles and structures volume one and volume two. Jung Han Kang is a security researcher at the same company. He participated in the final round of some CTFs and he is also interested in OS security and reading lights of some CTFs. Especially, he got married last year and please congratulate him. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Our goal of this presentation, as I mentioned earlier, we share our lightweight hypervisor-based kernel protector, Shadow Fox. Shadow Fox consumes less resource than previous researches, and we made it from scratch. We also share lessons learned from deploying and operating Shadow Fox in real world. Many excellent researches are only focused on laboratory environment. So when you try to apply them in real world, you could have many problems. We have been operating shadow box since last year and we share our experience now. This is a contents page. First, we will tell you a background of our research. Second, we will tell you how we design and implement the shadow box. Third, we will share our lessons learned. Finally, we will show a demo and sum up our presentation with black sound bytes. Linux kernel is everywhere from servers and PC to mobile devices and connected cars. And Linux kernel suffers from root keys and security vulnerabilities. Uh, unfortunately, devices which use Linux kernel could share these security threats, and the security threats often combine with other threats to take control of a system. Although you already have a protection mechanism in kernel level, fundamentally the mechanism could not protect kernel from these security threats and the mechanism often easily bypassed and neutralized by kernel object hooking and direct kernel object manipulation technique. Therefore, protections need an even lower level. We call this link minus one. This is well-known root keys and a list of kernel objects which are modified by root keys. Well-known root keys normally change codes, system tables, function pointers, process list, and module list. The descendant of well-known root keys also have similar patterns. The exploits tend to get root privilege and the root keys tend to hide their malicious behaviors. As you know, the attacker needs root privilege to load root key. Therefore, we assume that the attacker already have already has root privilege using exploits, and in this presentation, we only focus on root keys. To take the higher ground than root kernel level, we leverage virtualization technology in processor. Virtualization technology separates a machine into a host, secure world, and a guest, normal world. The host has link minus one privilege and can freely access and control the guest. Intel VTX and AMDV, ARM Trust Zone, are typical VT equipped hardware. This is traditional architecture leveraging VT technology. 
The host monitors and controls the gas through the virtualization technology and malwares of the gas cannot move to the host because of virtualization technology war. Um, unfortunately, I'm not the only man who find the benefit of virtualization technology. There were so many researches like this using it for protecting kernel from root keys. So it seemed that uh, I did not need to research on this field. But after studying about the previous works, I saw that they look like this object. Uh huh. Dragon. Griffin. And D1 link. The common point of this object is the myth. I heard and knew about them, but I cannot find in real world. Do you know where they are? Do you know? I agree that previous researches are excellent and I want to use them, but I don't know where they are, where they live. So, I think that they become the myth because of these reasons. First, many researches have preconditions which are hard, be, hard to be prepared in real world. They change kernel code or hypervisor code directly and need well known hash job, load over kernel module, kernel data, secure VM, and so on. Second, many researchers consume much resource. They run OSs in each world and consume many CPU cycles to introspect the gas because of semantic gap. Semantic gap comes from the gap between logical address of the guest and physical page of the host. The host only can access, uh, access physical page of the guest. Therefore, the host wants to introspect the guest object. The host should convert the guest logical address to the host physical page. This behavior causes many table traverses and consumes much resource. In conclusion, previous researches are not suitable for real world environment. As you know, real world environment is totally different from laboratory environment. And you even don't know the actual environment before your software is installed. So, this is real, the real world environment. Mm -hmm. uh, we think that practical and lightweight mechanism is needed for real world environment. And we started to make it from scratch three years ago. Uh, to be honest, uh, we, should not start, we should not have started because uh, it has been a hard work and we regret a little now. Anyway, this is design goal of our kernel protector. First, we focus on lightweight root kit detect and protect protection mechanism. And we also focus on small memory footprint. Second, we try not to modify code direct, uh, directly for deploying and we design the kernel protector to load anytime. From design, I would like to hand over to Jung Han, my coworker. Okay, my turn. Hello, I'm Jung Han Kang and a coworker of Sung Un. Glad to see you, everybody. Uh, I'm going to talk about design of shadow box only. As you look, um, this is shadow play which you might see in childhood. Yeah, there are a lightning bulb and actors which is make a shadow reflected in a screen. So we can watch the shadow and understand the story of shadow play. Suddenly, we got an idea that can be applied to our architecture design. Can you guess it? Mm, let me show you. 
Um, okay. In our design, the bulb is the ring minus one monitoring mechanism. We call this light bus. And the, and the actors are activity, activities or behaviors in operating system. And we, the audience, are the security monitor. We call this shadow watcher. So we named our corner protector shadow bus because we were inspired by shadow play. This is a detailed architecture of shadow box. First, light box, lightweight hypervisor, creates a gas which runs the operating system in it. And next, light box creates a host which shares corner with the gas. Conceptually, light box sets a different permission between the guest corner and the host corner. The most part of the guest corner are set read only permission. But the host corner is set read and write permission. Um, okay. As you see, uh, shadow box shares the Linux corner between the host and the guest. Uh, both use same corner. Uh, if there is a gas corner modification, then it, then it will be prevented and cannot affect the host corner. Next, shadow watcher. Shadow watcher is a security monitor, controls and supervise operating system in the gas using light box. Next. Okay. Uh, just one more. Okay. Uh, light bus, um, lightweight hypervisor, uh, isolate the guest from the host by using memory protection technique of VT, virtualization technology. But light bus make the corner be shared between the host and the guest. It is for having a small footprint, not wasting memory space. As the corner is shared, um, the light box easily knows the logical addresses of corner offset and easily converts the guest logical address to the host physical page address. Um, a similar case, there is a function of Linux, fun Linux corner uh, for to fees, for to fees. Fault fees is to find the physical page, not to traverse page table. So light box has narrow semantic gap caused by address translation. Uh, additionally, we designed light box can be loaded anytime like a loadable corner module. Okay. Shadow watcher monitors the guest via the light box. It used event driven and periodical way for monitoring the guest. Event driven way is for checking static immutable objects such as text code, system table, IDT table and so on. Um, periodical way is for checking dynamic mutable objects such as process list, kernel model list and function pointers. Okay, this is the summary of design of shadow box. Uh, so what can shadow box do? First, shadow box protect static corner objects against the rootkit. We define static corner objects are immutable in runtime. Therefore, the anomaly behaviors of rootkits are caused and system core table modification attacks. Uh, second, shadow box protects dynamic corner object against the root case. We defined dynamic corner objects are mutable in runtime. Therefore, the root case behavior are process and module list hiding and function point overwriting attacks. Um, briefly, 
Shadow Fox is able to protect an integrity of kernel. Okay. Next, Sunstan. All right, I'm back again, and from this page, we will show you how we implement Shadow Box. Normally, implementation part has so many detailed information. Therefore, we share core information of Shadow Box because of time. If you want to know more about our Shadow Box, uh, please check our paper. As I mentioned earlier, Shadow Box is loadable kernel module and Shadow Box is loaded after starting kernel. Because of this boot sequence, we use another mechanism, secure boot, to ensure integrity of boot process before shadow box. After secure boot and shadow box is loaded, like the box pause, the OS and prepares an environment for virtualization. After that, it separates the guest from the host and write the box resume the guest operating system. Lastly, it starts shadow watcher. Shadow watcher monitors the guest. After shadow box is loaded, all processes run within the guest, not the host. Static kernel objects are immutable. Therefore, static kernel object protection uses physical page protection technique. To protect physical page efficiently, extended page table, as known as EPT in Intel VTX and DMA remapping reporting table, as known as DMAR table in Intel VTD are used. I show you EPT first and DMAR table later. EPT maps Cast the physical address to host physical address and set new page permissions. Shadow box sets read and execute permission to static kernel object. We call this rocking. Shadow box sets no permission to itself. We call this hiding. Like this. As you know, root keys can modify permissions of page table in, in the guest. Uh -huh. But the guest cannot change the permission of EPT. As a result, root keys cannot modify the static kernel objects. This is a detailed view of memory protection. Left part of the page shows address translation between guest edge curve, uh, get, oh sorry, guest logical address and guest physical address. Right part of the page shows address, trans address translation between guest physical address and host physical address. If the root kit infects the system, they attack physical page directory like this or page table in the guest to change cores and system tables. But permissions of EPT override permissions of the guest physical page. So like this. These attacks are prevented by EPT. The host physical address does not change anything. And this is another memory protection technique using DMAR table in Winter VTD. DMAR table is more complicated than EPT. However, the basic con structure and concepts are same as EPT. DMAR table maps DMA address to physical address and sets new permission. Write the box sets no permission to static kernel objects and shadow box 
for protecting or for preventing DMA attacks. DMAR table can be protected by EPT, so right the box locks DMAR table to prevent unauthorized modification. Dynamic kernel objects are mutable. Therefore, shadow fox can, cannot use memory protection technique. Instead of it, shadow box monitors dynamic kernel objects and check them periodically. Process and module list are typical dynamic kernel objects and rootkits modify the list to hide themselves. To protect the list, shadow box uses hardware breakpoints on create and delete function of process and module. When the lists are changed, shadow box catches the event and synchronizes list in it. Then, it compares the list of the guest and list of shadow box periodically using VM preemption timer of VT technology. Function pointers could be also dynamic kernel objects and root keys modify them to hide themselves and do malicious behaviors. To protect function pointers, shadow box checks if the po they point to the buried kernel address space or not periodically using VM preemption timer. The concept of shadow box is to protect loaded kernel and this means that function pointer should pr point to the inside of kernel code or module code. If the function points, function pointer points to the, to the outside of them. For example, module code which is loaded after shadow box, they are embedded function pointer. Static and dynamic kernel object protections are important. However, for ensuring in operating system integrity, interactions between kernel and user privilege should be also protected x86 processor has many privilege related registers and system tables. Therefore, shadow box protects them using VT and memory rock technique. These are minor techniques, so if you want to do them more, please check our paper. All right, this is a result of well-known new ticket detection. The results show that shadow box can detect all of well-known root keys successfully. This is results of performance measurement of prototype. Uh, we use test machine which has Intel i7-4790 CPU and 32 gigabyte RAM and 512 gigabyte SSD for measurement. Spec. Parsec and kernel compile results shows from 1% to 10% overhead in comparison with bare metal machine. In kernel compile case, which has well mixed IO jobs and CPU jobs, 5.3% in single core processor environment and 6.2% in multi core environment. We think these are reasonable overhead because these overhead do not affect user experience. All right, lessons learned and the truth previous researches did not tell you. When we finished to implement prototype of shadow box, we were proud of ourselves and we thought that we are ready to launch it. So we deployed shadow box in Lear world. And oh, we met beast of real world such as false positive, slow down, system hang and so on. Previous researches did not tell us something important and we struggled against the beast. These are lessons we learned from deploying and operating shadow box. Lesson one, code area in Linux kernel 
is not immutable. Previous researches assumed that code area is immutable, but it is not true. Linux kernel has config jump label option. And this option is set by default in major Linux distros. This option, if this option is set, Linux kernel patches itself on runtime, and this cause conflicts with kernel protector. One solution is, uh, one solution of this problem is that you add exceptional cases for mutable code page. But this may cause another security problem, therefore we recommend, if possible, turn off config jump label option and rebuild kernel right now. Lesson two, cache type in APT is very important. You should set cache type carefully depending on physical page type. Previous researches only focus on page permissions on APT. But APT has cache type field per page and we should also consider setting it. Every system has its own memory map and the memory map IO area should be handled carefully. <laughs> memory mapped air IO area interacts with hardware, therefore the data written in this field, this field, this area should transfer to hardware immediately. Because of this reason, memory mapped IO area are set on cacheable type. If you misconfigure the cache type, it summons beasts from hell such as system hang and slow down and video, uh, video mode change error and so on. The solution is that you set uncacheable type to all physical page by default and set light back type to system lamp area only. System lamp area are typically used for code, data, dynamic memory and these sh should be set right back type for system performance. This is a memory map of our test machine. It shows many information about uh, memory area and almost memory areas except system RAM are memory map IO. So set cache type of EPT depending on system memory map like this. Mm -hmm. Lesson three, multi-core environment is very complicated. Each core modifies process list and module list concurrently. When hardware breakpoints exception or VM preemption timer occurred and shadow fox tried to check them, other cores could be changing them already. Therefore, we need a mechanism for synchronizing list data. Solution is that you use task with rock and module mutex of the gas for synchronization. Now, we have been operating shadow box in real world successfully. Uh, as a matter of fact, a shadow box is not perfect and has some compatibility issues. But we have been upgrading shadow box for years and we will continue to update shadow box. Demo, conclusion, and bracket sound device. Okay, demo time. Uh, I will show you demo videos. I prepared two videos, and the first one is, wait a second. Here. All right. First demo shows typical attacks of root keys. Demo machine has only kernel level protection mechanisms such as light protection. The, and the root kit can utilize the mechanism and do malicious behaviors. 
the attacker prepared a rootkit. As you can see, the rootkit is in rootkit directory. And now, the attacker opens a backdoor. However, this is not perfect because the user can find the backdoor process in process list. Like this. All right. The attacker lost the root keys to hide the backdoor process. For our research, we upgraded other next generation root kit to support the recent kernel version. And we also added a new horrible logo like this. Yeah, I'm scared. Mm -hmm. And finally, the backdoor process is invisible. Uh -huh. And the attacker will hide rootkit directory for perfect crime. This is commands of other rootkit. And the command is finished successfully. All right. And the rootkit directory is also invisible. Wait a second. OK, like this. Rootkit directory is hidden. After that, as you know, we all know the remote attacker connects the vector ports and can control the PC. As you can see, he got root privilege and got the shadow password file from the victim system. All right. The second demo is almost the same as previous demo, except shadow box is learning. Wait a second. This is my second demo file. All right. Second demo, the user prepared shadow box. Shadow box is loadable kernel module. Therefore, the user can load shadow box using ins mode command. All right. Now shadow box is activated, and kernel protection mechanisms such as static and dynamic kernel object protections are working. Yeah, all right. As same as previous demo, the attacker prepared a root kit, and the root kit is in root kit directory. The attacker is opening a backdoor like, like previous, and the backdoor process is in process list. Mm -hmm. All right. Finally, the attacker loads the root kit to hide the backdoor process. Mm -hmm. But the root kit cannot be loaded, and segmentation fault occurs because of shadow box. Shadow box light attack information in kernel log first. Shadow box detected the memory attack of a static kernel object. Mm -hmm. Second, shadow box detected a hidden process backdoor. Mm -hmm. And finally, shadow box detected a hidden module other next generation. As you have seen, shadow box can protect your PC from root keys. All right, demo is end. Future work. This is current state of shadow box. And this is next step of shadow box. We plan to make shadow box version 2 for ARM. Um, to be honest, we have almost finished it. 
finished it, and Shadowfox for ARM platform shares the, the architecture of Shadowfox for Intel platform. Typically, ARM processors are less powerful than desktop processor, and ARM processors are used for mobile environment. Therefore, Shadowfox for ARM has new features, such as workload concerned monitoring and remote attestation for device status checking and so on. We hope to present Shadowbox version 2 for ARM platform at the security conference. Conclusion and black sound bites. First, kernel level threat should be protected in more previous levels such as hypervisor. Second, Shadowbox is lightweight practical solution for protecting your kernel from root keys. Third, real world is Serengeti. You should have a strong mentality for defeating Vist. If you don't, use Shadowfox instead. Uh, this is last phase of our presentation. Myth or truth? The choice is yours. Thank you for listening. And these are our email address and project link. Please search Shadowfox for x86 at github.com. And our project, Shadowfox, is open source. So we always welcome your contributions, such as bug report, code contributions, and so on. If you have any idea uh, about Shadowfox, feel free to email us. Thank you again. And uh, any questions about Shadowfox? Oh, yeah. Uh, I think I present my presentation well. So everybody understand what I said, right? <laughs> OK. Uh, thank you. And uh, if you have any question about Shadow Fox, please email us. Thank you.